Hi, happy Friday. So this is the fourth time that I've tried to do this video and I keep having technology challenges. Hopefully this time I can actually get the video made um, and cover the topics that I want to cover in a way that is relatable. So usually when I, um, usually when a topic comes up three times from different people, this is when I choose to share it. One of the things that's come up three times is the topic of the impact of um, pornography and how this impacts the way men are relating to women. Uh, the other one that has come up three times is that I intimidate men. Um, I've had a man say, <clears throat> sex is sport. And I've also been told that I'm naive. So the sex is sport has only come up once, thankfully, and hopefully never again. And the naive has come up twice. Um, so I value your time and I value my time. I'll try to get this in um, with, you know, in a short possible time span. <clears throat> there's also toxic femininity that I want to talk about. So there's a toxic femininity. Um, there's a lot of talk about toxic masculinity in the way that women don't want men to behave, right? There's, um, there's a lot of kind of grandstanding and a lot of aggression that's coming from the feminist movement in terms of toxic masculinity. There was a huge buzz that was going on on social media about the Gillette ad. Certain men supported it and then there was a, there was a certain amount of backlash, which is obvious, right? And some people were saying that um, Gillette shouldn't be getting involved in social movements. My position on it is that I like the ad and I believe that brands should be getting involved with social movements because they have the exposure, right? They've got the budget and they have the exposure to reach as many people as possible. And so in order for us to actually have social change, I believe that brands should get behind us and they should take a position on how they see society. Now, in terms of my position on um, feminism is that I do consider myself a feminist, but I am not aggressive in it. Um, I don't think that conflict is going to move us forward in any sense. Um, you know, people just get caught up in, in the aggression. They... They get caught up in the in this tidal wave of anger and they end up missing the point. So for me, the position is that we should be collaborating. We shouldn't be fighting fire with fire. We shouldn't be um, trying to squash one another down in order to kind of improve your position. You don't push people down in order to raise yourself up. You raise other people up with you in order to grow with you, right? So it's, it should be, a, in my view... It should be a symbiotic relationship. Um, I think this also comes from, I've spent a lot of time on, on Borneo. I lived on Borneo for three years and I used to spend a lot of time in primary rainforest. And I think that if humanity can behave in the same way that a primary rainforest behaves, we've got hope. Everything within a primary rainforest has its role. It has a purpose and it is... Um, it works in a symbiotic way. There's no one thing that's kind of devouring another thing for its own self-serving um, purposes. Mother Nature doesn't work in this way. So um, I hear what men are saying about toxic femininity and they're kind of throwing things back and saying, yes, but you know, you're telling us not to behave like this and yet you're behaving like that. And I see the point. I do totally agree with this. You know, flinging mud at one another is not going to help in any, in any sense of the word. I think that we, we, we should be supporting one another's strengths. And, um, you know, when people grow, there are growing pains. And when people have their weaknesses triggered, one of, the, one of the easiest ways to trigger a child, for example, is to not meet their needs. So babies only cry when they, you know, when they're tiny, babies generally cry when they are hungry. They'll moan a little bit. And then if their needs are not met, then, then they'll end up having a tantrum or they get very, very angry. Adults are exactly the same way. If your needs are not being met, then a person gets angry. But this, the, sticky, the sticky part here is that a lot of people don't actually ask for their needs to be met. First of all, they don't know what their needs are. And because they don't know what their needs are, they then don't ask for their needs to be met. Um, you can't get angry with people if you're not asking for what you want. So in terms of the toxic masculinity and toxic femininity position, I don't like um, this approach where women are getting angry and they're telling men what they shouldn't be doing, what they're doing wrong. 
we need to be we need to be cultivating what we do want praising like in the exact same same way that you work with children you praise beneficial behavior you reward beneficial behavior you don't dwell on what they're doing wrong you don't point out the negative you you um praise the goodness right so um i uh, yeah i don't agree with the aggression and i don't i'm not in support of it at all so <clears throat> the other thing that's come up having said this now and having clearly said that my position is that i enjoy collaboration i've also then been told three times the first time i was told that um, i emasculated a man and the other two have mentioned that i'm intimidating so my world view is a positive world view um i've lived in and worked in 33 countries over the last 24 years for the duration of my life i have literally not been in, enrolled in some form of active education for only i think 4 years of my life only 4 years of my life have i not been involved in pursuing academic education i am very well read i'm well qualified and i've invested a lot of time money and effort into myself not from a self not from a selfish position but from a position where we should be learning and and growing ourselves in order to then contribute back to society like there is no value in education and there's no value in learning a bunch of things if you're not actively utilizing that in the world so i don't really understand how this is perceived as intimidating um i don't you know it's interesting again kind of bridging back to toxic masculinity and toxic femininity because i've had a lot of feedback from women saying you're inspiring and i really want to be like you and you're you're owning yourself you're claiming yourself you've totally stepped into your own power and so i'm getting a lot of positive feedback from women but then i've had these three men say that i'm intimidating so again my position is just that we should be raising one another up and i've had some amazing male clients i really have i will say they've all been um at least probably 10 years younger than me perhaps this makes a difference i don't know maybe maybe it's a generational thing maybe if we were the same age they feel that i challenge them or i like i don't even know what it is but i think my message to women is that you know you shouldn't be diminishing yourself there is no need for you to diminish yourself in order for the person that you're with to feel good about himself you're supposed to be partners right and and i specifically say partners and not equals because the word equals then triggers a whole other bunch of stuff as well we're supposed to be partners we're supposed to be collaborating and working together helping one another grow and move forward it's not a competition it's not about perfection it is about progress it is about evolution it is about growth as far as i'm concerned otherwise all that ends up happening is that we get caught in a cycle of conflict and destruction um so my intention is never ever ever to be intimidating i am simply the person that i am i have a strong will i have a strong character and i believe that in order for me to do the work that i do in order to help people with grief and loss and difficulties in life you by nature you're going to require strength of character um so i value this i really i really really value this and i believe that um you know it's not all men that perceive me as intimidating because after having this this feedback now three times i've asked other men and specifically it kind of bothered me the first time it happened it it bothered me immensely i specifically went and asked men that i respect very strong men that i respect do you think i'm intimidating and they said no colin you're not intimidating but you have a very strong character you have strong will and you know who you are you are living 
Like you're, you're being true to yourself is what one person said. And I thought exactly these are the words that I use with other people. Be true to yourself. So, um, you know, I just feel that if a person is, is um, intimidated by my strength, it has less to do with me than it has to do perhaps with their own self-esteem or with their own challenges, their own triggers. And that there is value if you are intimidated by another person and they're engaging with you from a position of kindness and openness and yet you are somehow triggered by it and you're somehow intimidated by it, it provides an opportunity for you to look yourself in the mirror and ask some valuable questions. If you're not willing to actually expose your own vulnerability, there's simply no growth in this. So I'm already at 11 minutes and I don't want to leave you with a huge talk. I'm going to leave you with this and then I'll come back um, and talk about pornography. Uh, yeah, pornography and being naive. Bye.